Hey guys, welcome to my channel, welcome to the stream, welcome to a new video series. A new series working on this guy right there, that is the F-16C slash N Aggressor. Um, yeah, it's made by Tamiya and it's 148 scale. I'm going to load the intro and we'll get started. Alright guys, starting a new project and as you can see I've got the instructions out here. I'm going to start off by going through the sprues and we'll see what we got. This is uh, Tamiya's version of the F-16 Aggressor and uh, I've got, ever since I've even seen a picture of this thing I've wanted to do a splinter camouflage. So that's what we're going to do on this. <clears throat> F-16 of course being arguably one of the best dogfighting jets in the world. I say arguably because it may not be the best. The F-22 might be a little better, but F-16 arguably out can out dogfight just about any other plane. Um, of course it takes skill from the pilot and all that kind of stuff, and I'm rambling and it's got nothing to do with the model. So, let me change the camera and we'll go through the sprues get my coffee out of the way here and uh, yeah let's see here you might notice my overhead cam is a little zoomed in more than it usually is um, I figured I'd try and give you guys a little bit closer view of everything that I'm doing so I've already taken these out of the bags and so all that fun stuff this looks like uh, sprue C all of a lot of missile and drop tanks plus a uh, our rear stabilizers, we've got our seat and our pilot, okay. Another C sprue, which is just this, a mirror image of this one, but without without the pilot and the, and the seat, the ejector seat, you call it. We've got, looks like our main top section of the fuselage. This is nice that this is all one piece. So I don't have to worry about seam lines here. One thing that's kind of interesting, although I can see the detail that Tamiya has put in, if I get this at the right angle, get that light shining off of it, you can see all that detail. There we go, across there, right there, right? You can see that, but I can almost not feel it. It's extremely shallow. So I'm going to have to be really careful about sanding this thing because the our detail in here is so that our lines are so shallow. In fact, they're not even lines; they're just rivets. There's lines here and here, but yeah, like I said, they are shallow. Anyway, uh, next, more fuselage. This is obviously the underside of the main fuselage and then we got our top side here on the front and looks like maybe an intake that's kind of cool a one-piece intake or that might be the engine exhaust I'm not sure could be the exhaust okay here we've got wings and things and things okay yeah here's our intakes here's our main intake right here two oh that's gonna be fun two halves of a nose cone that's gonna be fun to get rid of seams on that landing gear another drop tank I guess funny shape on that interesting shape on that drop tank Okay, we have engine stuff, intake, there's our main intake, little cap that goes on there, and then, yeah, this here's our intake on the inside, looks like all intake stuff there, and then, looks like we've got another one. 
This is interesting. This is a Q sprue. What is this one? This is H. Oh, they're different. So we have two two engines, but they are different. But we also got two different intakes. So I'll be checking that out in the instructions. It does look different. They are different. The fans are different here. And our engine nozzles, our exhaust nozzles are different too. So, yeah. And one final sprue. Um, I'm gonna guess that's, well, that could be the front landing gear wheel. And rails, these look like the rails, the missile rails on the wing tips. And then, yeah, okay, that's it. it. That's it. There's not a lot of sprues. F-16 comparatively to other, other uh, kits, or not other kits, but it seems the F-16 comparatively to say like an F-15 or an F-14, the F-16 is a small bird. Like the wingspan on this is really, really small uh, in comparison to like the wingspan on an F-15 or <laughs> look at the huge wingspan on an F-14, right? F-14 is a huge plane. Anyway, so let's get these back in here and we'll have a look at what we're doing first. Now, what else do we have in the kit? Obviously we have instructions. Tamiya offers, gives you a nice unfolding sheet of our, where decals go. Okay, so here we go. So we got option A, A here. F-16 Block 30, 18th Aggressor Squadron. B is, I don't know what B is. Let's flip this over, we got two sides. I don't know what B is, they don't tell me what B is. And we got C is also an F-16 Block 32, 64th Aggressor Squadron. But this one is out of, um, Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. And then we have D, and I don't know what they don't tell me what D is. So I don't know what D is. So we've got four different options. Um, I'm going to go with A simply because I want to build the Alaskan one. AK. Um, that's. Uh, 354th Fighter Wing Ellison Air Force Base in Alaska and I want to do that one simply because that's what turned me on to this kit was the 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 box art and right there the box art um, of the plane out of Alaska but although I'm gonna be doing those colors I'm going to do the a different camouflage pattern like I said I'm gonna be doing splinter I want to do a splinter pattern and if you don't want to know what splinter pattern is it's that okay I'll put this down I'll change the camera this is it this is what I'm doing splinter pattern I'm gonna duplicate this and this okay and uh, yeah so where did I get this I got this on the old interwebs. Um, yeah, I picked up a. It's a. It's a list. It's a sheet of various decals and things for various F-15s um, by Furball. Furball. Those guys. Okay. Furball. And so it comes with a whole bunch of decals, like a lot of decals. Two sheets for doing these various F-16s. So, but I bought these specifically because I want to do the splinter pattern, the splinter camel. And so that's that. And that's why I have that one. That is the plan. That is the plan. Okay, back to the kit. We do have two clear sprues, or actually three. 
three clears. Okay. This looks like all of our like instrumentation and lights and stuff like that are L and U sprues on that. And we have two canopies. Two canopies. Now bo both identical. Both offer the N tree number one and two. N one and two. But one is a smoke color, clearly you can see on there. A smoke color and one is clear. What I did want to check out though is the is there a parting line that I'm going to have to clean up on these? So I'm going to get rid of our little protective thing here. And yep, we've got a parting line right along the center there on our, our main canopy. I can feel it, so I'd have to get it ready. You can see it there, my black uh, pant. See that parting line right through there? That angle right you can see it right right along there right um, they got it on the front or I guess this is the rear we got it on the rear as well I could get it right along there so that's gonna take some work and look even if I do the if I do the uh, smoke version yeah, the smoke one's got a parting line also. So, it's got a parting line along there too. So, either one I choose, I'm going to have to clean up that parting line. But that's a problem for future me. Don't have to worry about that right now. We have Tamiya's decals. So, I haven't opened this bag yet. Um, Just get this open. Oh, to me, I use a staples. You know, you know, to me, you could invest in a heat, a heat press. You know, they're not they're not too expensive. You know, fifty bucks or so, you guys could get a heat press and save a lot of money on staples. The amount of kits that you guys produce, you could save money on staples with a one-time purchase of a heat gun. You can even put a staple here in the fold of the bag. To keep the bag folded over. And you taped it. Not only did you Staple the fold in the bag, you taped it. Total unnecessary. So there's the decals that the, to me, that the kit comes with. <clears throat> and they're pretty much the same. I've got these already. The AKs. I've got them in the other decals. So that's all nice and fine. What I do not have. Oh, they have lighter ones there. Anyway, and then our specific squadron decals. Yeah, so that's that. Okay, so I imagine cockpit, usually in the airplanes, we usually start with a cockpit. <coughs> so, let's put this aside and let's have a look. Step number one, let's get these out over here because I'm going to need them. Step number one, <clears throat> sure enough, putting our cockpit pieces in. But the other thing I have for this plane is these. By Red Fox Studios, um, 3D acrylic instrument panels. Okay, I'm cheating because I don't want to paint all the dials and buttons and switches and everything because I'm terrible at it. So I like to use these 3D 3D sets by Red Fox Studios. <clears throat> Pull 
pull these out. I love doing these with just about every plane that I do. <clears throat> so that's them there. And they just look nice and crisp and a lot better than what I could paint myself. And all you do is glue them down with some CA glue. Well, what they have their little instruction sheet to tell you which pieces to clean up. You gotta you gotta file down or scrape down all of these, all of the buttons and switches and things, and make them smooth. There's the four pieces or five pieces we're gonna do, and then they show them where they go on here in a nice little photograph instruction thing. So. Yeah, um, and then just the plastic card for, for that. And then the other thing I have for this plane is a set of photo etch seat belts uh, by Edward. Uh, FE931, F16 CN seat belts. Seat belts? <laughs> seat belts. Yeah, because you guys know I don't do pilots, so I need to add some seat belts to it to make it look a little bit better. After all, Airplanes do have seat belts in them. So anyway, so that's that. Put these off to the side. Oh, one last little bag. We've got some poly caps and some pins. I think these are going to be for maybe being able to remove the drop tanks or something like that. We'll find out as that go as we get there. All right. So anyway, let's find our our cockpit sprues off of our A tree. We want 21, 17, 20, 23, 22. Let's find our A tree here. Right near the top, we've got A. I'm gonna need D also. That's nice. So there's A, and then there's D. Okay. Off of the A tree. 17 is the main one. Let me change my glasses here. I can't even see the numbers. Much better. 17, our main bucket. Seventeen. And then we need twenty-one and twenty. These two here. Okay. We need twenty two and twenty three. Little triangular guys, so they're over here. And there's our main cockpits. Now we're going to need sixteen. Get to our little small bits later, but we'll get these put in first. So I've got to do some, got to do some destroying of the detail. So on this, I just want to make sure my nubs are cleaned up so that we get a good clean fit when we're all ready to go and we're there. This little nub, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be there. I don't think it is, so I'm going to cut that off. Could be wrong, I don't know. But I don't think it's supposed to be there. That one there. Okay, so there's our bucket done. the sprue nice and clean. I'm just going to sand that down. The rear wall just simply goes in like this. The 
think I can glue that in like that right now. If you're curious what glue I'm using, it's uh, Tamiya Extra Thin. I like to use the quick setting type. They have their two types, right? I have them here. Okay, this is just the regular extra thin, and then this is the quick setting, right? Lighter green bottle. Okay, and this is the one I like to use the most. <laughs> Why do I have two of them? Well, because in the event I run out, I've got an extra, and that's what I want. Is my camera searching for... I put it to automatic... Um, light setting or something like that, and I feel like I'm seeing some flashing as I out of the corner of my eyes. So there's our one instrument panel. It's kind of hard to see the detail. The detail is very, very small, but you hear my knife scrape across it. <laughs> right? Um, it's scraping all the detail. I'm going to take my file and I'm going to file all that down smooth. You have to do that because of our 3D, our 3D resin pieces. Um, you have to file it down smooth to give them a nice flat surface to stick to. Okay, so I'm going to start by getting rid of this. Actually, looking at my at my piece that's going to go here, it's going to go right on this one. My first instinct was to get rid of this big knob knob here, but there's actually a notch a notch cut out for it, so I don't get rid of that, which is good. All I need to do is file this down flat. give my, my piece a flat surface to lie down on. Now one thing that's going to make life easy is to me I hasn't really gone overboard in making the details on these super raised up and, and large. I would say they probably did a good job at making them to scale in the fact that they're very small, the details are small. Okay, so that one's done. I'm just going to put it here so I don't accidentally throw it off the page or something like that. Now this one also has a raised little knob, but there is no cutout on this one for it. So this one I am going to cut away and get rid of. I'm just going to do this. There we go. That'll be a little bit easier to file. So get rid of all the nice detail. It's, you know, the first time I ever did this, it's like, I, I really hope this works. <laughs> because I've just filed down all the buttons and switches off of my plane out of my cockpit. And uh, it better work, is the thought that went through my head. And, well, it was a pleasant surprise. Everything worked out fine. There we go, that one's smooth. of our detail on this switch panel. If you're like me, you know, you, it feels like you're just ruining your model kit by doing this. But when you put that, put those replacement panels on, you're going <laughs> to... Yeah, all those fears are going to go away because it's going to look good. There we 
go. That panel looks thoroughly flattened out. Not quite here though. edge to there we go there we go okay one more to go One thing, that, there are certain planes that have cockpits in them that seem futile and pointless to really do a lot of detail on them. Um, maybe you're a big fan of the, the Harrier jump jet. Um, you know, that old famous plane from the from the early 80s British airplane or Navy airplane um, vertical takeoff and landing you know it's basically the one that uh, the F-35 replaced in the Navy fleet F-35 B or C I don't know what it is um, vertical takeoff and landing if you're a huge fan of the Harrier jump jet you know the cockpit is really small in that thing and you can barely see anything Okay, so there's our fourth panel, detail removed. So, we can put these in. To me it's nice enough to make them fit perfectly. I'm going to just slot them in like that. My glue is just kind of starting to run out here. I say run out, but it's it's not really running out, it's just when it gets down to the point where you know the the tip is just in the the tip of the brush is just into the fluid. To me that's running low. So those are in. Now something I have not done, I have not considered painting yet. I haven't done anything with paints. I haven't looked at the colors I'm going to use or anything like that. 
I have looked at the instruction booklet to see what colors they call for this thing. They would have me... Let's get all my dust off of here. Okay. I have to take a, a step back. I have to take a step back here and uh, think about the colors I'm going to be painting this thing. This, I have a plethora of Tamiya gray paints and uh, what they call for for the color of the cockpit is XF20. XF20 is medium gray. Now I have a whole bunch of grays. I'm going to have to get this out. I don't like painting these with a brush because you get a brush strokes are just horrible. We've got our little panels. Let's change the camera again. Alrighty. Got our little panels to go in there. Let's get these out of the bag. Bingo. We're going to be doing these four only. These are the instrument instrument ones and we'll deal with those later. I'm going to need some CA glue. I need my extra professional CA glue applicator. So you can just bend the cardboard back to get these off of here. They're basically stuck on there at the, from the factory and they only stick on once. They're not sticky. They're just the way they stick on there. See how I've peeled that off and now it doesn't stick to anything, right? It doesn't stick. It just moves around. Okay. There's that one. It's going to go on right here. It's going to fit just like that. Okay. We want to try and make sure that little notch right here is lined up with this little section here. Let's get some CA glue. You don't need a lot of glue, but you know, you want enough on there that it's going to work. And you need to think about this needs to be positioned perfectly the very first time because the CA glue is going to dry almost instant once you get this thing on there. You're not going to have a lot of room a lot of time to move it around. Now there is a little bit of a curve so I'm pressing down to hold it there. If you find that uh, it doesn't want to stay you can use a little bit of accelerator. Now something I am going to have to do is move it. I didn't get it positioned perfectly the first time. Now I'm going to actually have to use a little bit of glue right there. Just hold that for a sec. Did not hold. She doesn't want to hold now. You can clearly see where it was holding with the, on the with the paint missing. 
need to reapply this. And let's try again. Test fit. Yep, he's good. Like I said, this is not perfectly straight. This has a little bit of a curve to it. Just a little bit. And so you gotta make sure these pieces actually sit down, right? Sit down like this, just a little bit. There we go. Okay, number three. Get my blade underneath there. I'm gonna do this one while I'm at it. There we go. Okay. This one's just going to sit right here. Like that. Okay. This one has to go around that little notch in there like this. It shouldn't be an issue. Should be okay. Although in a sense, I do feel like I've got a little bit of, like this just doesn't quite let it sit properly. It's close though. our instrument panel just like that isn't that a nice perfect paint job that's awesome and we got that little bit of a gloss that we're supposed to have because it's supposed to be like a semi-gloss panels and fully detailed really beautiful and 100% way better than I could ever paint so 
it looks good. I like that, and that's why I like these um, quick set pit, uh, sets. Okay, I think, guys, I think this is where I need to leave it for today. Um, yeah, this is where. <clears throat> There's a couple of pieces I need to do. Um, off of our D tree, I have to paint these. D1, 6, and 7. Let's find my D. <clears throat> Over the D tree, I need to paint these. And I'm going to do it with a brush. this one properly last time I used it <clears throat> so now I need to get these colored the right color it's one six seven have some black tips that we need to paint too. <clears throat> Just flat black. They call for semi-gloss black, it doesn't really matter. Semi-gloss black is almost flat. In fact, if you wanted to get real technical, your hand grip should actually be a rubber black. That's just their little grips where they where you hang on. I'm gonna trim these on the sprue right here where I need to paint that black and then trim the sprue back like that. So I can get in there with the brush. in the way. Paint our little details here. These are the kind of little things that the average person looking in your canopy not really going to notice very much. But you know it's there. You know you did that detail, right? So, yeah, why not? Okay, I need to clean this brush. I've got about 10 minutes and that should allow me to get their, their final pieces in. We can get our petals off of the sprue. Okay, I'll leave these just for a moment while they while they dry. Petals are supposed to go in. Let me move 
lives here. Then let's go in right there, which I believe is this little little hole right there. So I'm going to take this. joystick control and our joystick for the side our main joystick this guy here on the side right here. You know, face him the right way. Like this. And he's going to go in right there. So again, a little glue on that tip. resin parts do make it a little bit of a challenge to get it sitted in where it's the where Tamiya had intended. The other part here is this guy has to go on on that little peg. Again, sorry if my head's in the way. So he's gonna go on this little peg here. That. And they show you here, he's supposed to be really facing forward, like this. So it looks like I'm not going to have an issue with him fitting on the peg. So that's good. Controls in just like that. Okay. Control sticks in. Pedals in. There we go. And that is it for this page. It's funny, you know. They do show your little instruction here. Do not cement with our, our glue thing with the X through it but there's nothing on here that says do not cement. <laughs> you gotta glue everything in, right? Anyway, that's it for step one. Step two is our la main landing gear, which needs to be basically painted. Everything here needs to be painted white with the exception of a couple of things. So that's something I need to do um, in preparation I need to prepare for all that. I need to paint everything. Now, normally you guys have seen me um, prime everything with the Mr. Surfacer 1500 black. Um, get everything primed. Everything is black, right? 
this model, I'm going to go a little bit different route. I'm going to be doing Mr. Surfacer 1500 Gray. Um, I think it's a 1500, yeah, the 1500 Gray. Okay, I'm going to use this one. So even though I prime it all, you're still going to be able to see the detail. <laughs> Normally I prime this stuff black and you guys, all the details gone, you can't see it on the camera. Um, obviously I can see it, but you can't. So I'm going to go through every sprue and I'm going to prime everything while it's on the sprue so it's all primed and ready to go. And then all the landing gear stuff and all the intake, I've got to paint that all white. I'm just going to use regular Tamiya uh, white paint. I'll do that. But I'll do that off camera because that's just spray painting with spray bomb and, and all that fun stuff, right? So yeah, there's no need for to bore you guys with that. But that's where I'm going to leave this episode, Guy. I'm going to finish that up. We've got this done. And uh, we're going to move on to the next step. And we'll work on that next time. So down below in the description box, you guys are going to see a bunch of links. And a couple of those links in particular are a link to my Twitch channel. I'd love it if you guys went on my Twitch channel and followed me on there. Even subscribe. That would be even better. But that costs money, so I'm not going to really ask you for to do that. But if you go on my Twitch and you follow me on there, you'll get notified when I go live. And you can talk to me live and uh, see me do this stuff and, and all that kind of good, 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 good stuff. The other one is my Instagram. You see my link to my Instagram down below. And after I finish every project, I take a few pictures of it and I upload it onto my Instagram. So you can see all the different models and stuff I've made in the last few years um, by going on my Instagram. And beyond that, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you already haven't, and we'll see you all in the next one.